Hello everybody! I'm Raphael Perry and it's time for some more Battle Brothers. I know it's been a long time since I last played and the chieftains of yore suffered a miserable fate against witches and their many minions. However, a new expansion has been released. The Fury of the North expansion and we'll have lots of big hairy barbarian blokes to deal with. I've been looking forward to this for a long time and in fact for the last few weeks I've been playing quite a lot with the Battle Brothers Legends mod which is of course completely incompatible with this new expansion. But fear not, update is coming. Update is always coming. For now though, I'm just gonna dive right into this expansion and have some fun. Now I wasn't able to record earlier but I, and I wasn't able to restrain myself, I did play a bit, play around a bit has some fun. But let's go see what we got, shall we? Now this is a really nice thing that we have in this new expansion. We have Company Origins. I'm gonna go through all of them and I think I know which one I'm gonna go for. I mean it could be the Northern Raiders, it could be anything else, or it could be the Northern Raiders. However, let's just see, shall we? I like the skull ratings they give above the company origins here, just like the mission difficulty. So, rebuilding a company. You are second in command in a mercenary company that has been tracking a brigand named Hoggart for some time now. An unexpected turn of events leaves the company in shatters, not in tatters, in shatters. And you in charge to rebuild it to its former glory. Recommended for new players as it includes some helpful guidance at the beginning. Uh, so this was the second start in early access because initially we had this one, a new company. After years of bloodying your sword for meagre pay, you've saved enough crowns to start your very own mercenary company. With you are three experienced mercenaries with whom you've fought side by side in the shield wall before. A quick start into the world without any particular advantages or disadvantages. So this was the original early access start. It was literally rebuilding a company without Hoggett the Weasel. You would appear on the map next to a town and you get a little bit of flavour text about some old veteran telling you, you know, spears and shields are good, get some food, go out, be a mercenary. There you go, right? That was, that was like literally it. So this is basically the free mercenary start without Hoggett the Weasel. So this was always a nice little, um, essentially side quest, a tutorial. This is basically without the tutorial and just diving right in. Next up, we have the Peasant Militia, which is really popular among a lot of the people on the forums. Many people are wanting to see people play with this one. Okay. It started as a ragtag militia made up of anyone brave or desperate enough to volunteer for defending their homes, but has grown into a small army. An army that needs to be fed each day. Perhaps the militia's services could be rented out. So, peasant army. Start of a roster of 12 poorly equipped peasants. I bet they're really poorly equipped. Human wave. Take up to 16 men into battle at once and have up to 25 in your roster. There are a lot of, there's a very popular mod actually that's been around for a long time that lets you use 16 or 18 men in battle. A lot of people love it to bits and they are all over this origin. Uh, dirty peasants can never hire anyone that isn't a lowborn peasant. To be fair, this is like throwing waves of goblins at a problem and you know, throw your minions at a problem and hope it'll go away. This is essentially saying we got a load of guys who are utter garbage, but with enough experience and levels they might turn into something magnificent. This is all about overwhelming the enemy with numbers, you know, swarming round them and just mullering them to death with lots of light attacks and feeble cretins and cripples. I don't know if I want to play this one immediately, okay? Uh, I'll probably try it out for a laugh, but it, it's probably not for me. I prefer to have more durable um, quality brothers, uh, possibly a smaller company. 
but I'll definitely give it a try at some point. Band of Poachers. For years you've made a decent living by poaching in the local woods, evading your lord's men by being quick on your feet. But pickings have become slimmer and slimmer and you're faced with a decision. How to make a living when all you know is how to use a bow. Robin Hood, Robin Hood, riding through the glen. Robin Hood, Robin Hood, with his band of men. Feared by the bad, loved by the good. Sorry, I have testicles, I can't go much higher. Robin Hood, Robin Hood, Robin Hood. Just saying. Two skulls. So hunters, start with a group of three woodsmen. Now, the woodsmen are generally... Oh no, that's lumberjacks, isn't it? So the, but the woodsmen are generally equipped with axes to begin with, but I imagine this is a custom group. Expert scouts. You move faster and can always get a scouting report for any enemies near you. Always getting a scouting report is really useful. Travel light. You can carry less items in your company's inventory. So, carrying less items, bit of a problem. I tend to carry everything I find, so that would be a major issue for me. I would like to try this at some point, but probably not on camera as my initial campaign. Next we have the beast list. So we're definitely onto the two skulls, and then the three skulls are probably down here. I like this picture here. Dead nightmare. You and your men make your living by hunting down the many beasts that beset villages on the fringes of civilization. It's dangerous work, but it pays well enough, and there's always a bigger beast to slay and more crowns to earn. Basically, if you're a fan of the Witcher, this is the origin for you. You'll literally, um, so each one of these companies gets a custom map portrait, apart from possibly the first two. Um, like the Lone Wolf, I'll get to that one in a bit, but that's a, a custom, you know, like, map portrait of, like, basically the guy you're playing almost, and these. Their custom portrait looks like Geralt of Rivia. You know, he's got the grey hair tied back, uh, kind of hanging a bit loose as well. Uh, the, the old dark wolf armor. So, the Beast Slayers start with three Beast Slayers and decent equipment, as well as some Beast Trophies. Expert Trackers, see tracks from further away. Expert Skinners. Each beast you slay has a 25% chance to drop an additional trophy. Now, I don't know what the base chance is for a beast to drop a trophy. If the base chance is less than 25, then this extra 25% roll is better odds. If the base chance is higher than 25, then this is a lesser chance. So I don't know how useful this is. Because you could kill a beast and get no trophy and then get the bonus trophy, or you could get a normal trophy and no bonus trophy, or you could get both, right? And not knowing the odds of the initial roll, I don't know how this compares. Prejudice. Most people don't trust your kind, so you get 10% worse prices. Well, the witches are mutants, and yeah. Um, that one? Uh, someone else is playing that one. I think Splattercat's playing that one, and he's having a great time. So, I'll, I'll let him play that one, you know? I'll, I'll try it myself later when I'm in the mood. Trading Caravan. Two skulls again. You're running a small trading caravan and have most of your crowns invested into trading goods. But the roads have become dangerous. Brigands and greenskins lie in ambush. Lie in ambush, not lay in ambush. We are not American, thank you very much. And there's rumours of even worse things out there. Caravan. Start with two caravan hands in your employ. Nice. Trader, get 10% better prices for buying and selling again. That's nice. Not a warrior. Start with no renown and gain renown at half the normal rate. So this is the grindy campaign where you're you're going to be getting renown really slowly. I don't know if that means you're going to have extra objectives to try and complete because you'll run out of them soon enough otherwise. Essentially, you're probably never going to be working for the noble houses. Or at least not until about day 120. Day 80 to 120, maybe, of this campaign. Deserters. Immediately, I'm thinking of Eldorado. But hey, that's, uh, that's another game and another time. We can talk about that some other time. 
For too long you have been dragged from one bloody battle to another, at the whim of lords sitting in high towers. Last night you absconded from camp together with three others. You're dressed as soldiers still, but you're deserters, and the noose will be your end if you stay here for too long. Start with three deserters and a decent and decent armour, but lower funds and a noble house that wants to hunt you down. That's a pretty big negative, actually. First to run! Your men always are first to act in the very first round of combat. Now, I presume that's just the ones you start with rather than your entire company. Um, that's actually good for running away. The deserters in game usually were archers and have good range to stats. But I'm not sure that's the case here, because I think it's more of a custom company. I haven't seen anyone trying this one yet, so I'd like to see someone try. And this all looks good. Davkul cultists. Oh, more bloody Davkul. Davkul awaits. You lead a small flock devoted to the Elder God, and it's time to spread the word. Find more followers, acquire riches, and please Davkul with sacrifices. So, cultists. Start with a group of four cultists with poor equipment. More cultists may flock to you for free. I imagine this could happen frequently. However, sacrifices. Davkul will occasionally demand sacrifices from you, but also bestow boons upon those loyal to him. So you'll literally have to sacrifice random company members. In other words, don't get too attached to anyone good, because you might have to lay him on the altar and stab his guts out any time. Let's see what else we have. Northern Raiders. Now, this is probably the one for me. I say probably because there's another one that's quite appealing to me, okay? <laughs> look at that, look at that. He's got the war paint from Conan the Barbarian when they're sneaking into the caves. That's awesome. He's got the two snakes on the belt as well. Oh, man. For all your adult life, you've been raiding and pillaging in these lands. But with the local peasantry poor as might, you may want to finally expand into the profitable field of mercenary work. That is, if your potential employers are willing to forgive your past transgressions. Warband. Start with free, experienced barbarians. Now, experienced means they are going to have levels, okay? Outlaws. Start with bad relations to most human factions. <laughs> it's gonna be hard finding work early on. In fact, you might want to raid and pillage caravans and villages for a while. If you're actually going to go full raider, you probably don't want permanent destruction, otherwise you'll run out of places to raid. <laughs> Pillagers. You have a higher chance to get any items from slain enemies as loot. That is quite nice. That's right up there with the Beast Slayer's expert skinner's ability to get extra monster parts. However, for free skulls, and this I think will be the one I go for today, Lone Wolf. Not just because of the awesome Lone Wolf game books from my childhood. You've been travelling alone for a long time, taking part in tourneys and sparring with young nobles. A hedge knight, tall as a tree, you've never needed anybody for long. Is it true still? Lone Wolf, start with a single experienced hedge knight and great equipment, but low funds. Elite few can never have more than 12 men in your roster. Now, back when this origin was originally announced, the developers stated that you, with this origin, you would have no reserve you wouldn't be able to put any soldiers in reserve. You know, your your company leader would have to fight every time, and so would the rest of your company. You know, no resting, no sitting out of battle going, ow, I've got a bad injury, I need to recover. Just straight back in there. Avatar. If your hedge knight dies, the campaign ends. Now, something that's very nice about all these origins is, for a long time, the community have been asking to be able to take 18 warriors into combat and have a company of 30. 
while there's been a mod that does that for a very long time, they have been asking the developers to just give them the ability straight into the game, make it default and so on. For all those players wanting to field large companies, and yet it's all about micromanaging every brother, and it, it's, it's about enjoying the, the management side of the game, Guys, if you like that, this is for you, right? This is your big company. Origin. The obvious drawback being that you can't have any of the decent guys like knights or squires or sword masters, maybe stuff like that, you know. Uh, band of poachers for guys who wanted better scouting, yeah. So this has been a long community demand. Also, back during late early access, I, on the forums, asked, hey, can we have more Viking stuff in the game, more more early, you know, more late Dark Ages, early medieval stuff? Because I know the game's kind of aimed around early medieval, but it starts to feel like it's getting more high medieval. Uh, could we have some more Dark Ages stuff, like Viking and Anglo-Saxon things in the game? And so we got the Ancient Dead have some Viking and Anglo-Saxon style equipment, but... It's nice to see an actual barbarian faction, so I am one of the people who originally asked for this. I am going to love playing this Origin. However, this was also a community demand. There were a lot of people asking for a, a character that represented them on the battlefield. They're saying, why can't our company officer fight? Why can't our commander go into battle? And and people said, well, what if he dies and it's game over? And they sort of went, oh, oh, yeah. But a few of them were like, yeah, I'd be okay with that. And you know what, guys? For all those of you who asked for that, this is the origin for you. Now, we have a Davkul cultist origin. It's a shame we don't have a religious crusade origin to, to go with that. You know, one where you'd have, like, some monks, maybe a crusader or something, you know. That'd be really nice. Now... The Battle Brothers Legends mod has not yet been updated to run with this DLC. And I'm thinking, I want to play Northern Raiders, but while I wait for Legends to get it updated, as soon as Legends gets updated, I'll probably be playing this DLC with the Legends mod, right? So I'm thinking, Lone Wolf, single Hedge Knight. If he lives, he lives. If he dies, he dies. And... It, it potentially a much shorter campaign, especially as I don't play on easy. <laughs> um, so this would be one to play while I wait for Legends to be updated. So let's do just that. I'm going to call the company The Good Companions. And that probably won't fit. It actually does. Nice. Uh, I'm going to turn off permanent destruction and I'm going to choose a nice banner. We do have a couple of very nice new banners actually when I can get to them. We have this one which is more Rus inspired I think and this one which is more Vikinger. Vikinger folk and I do like these very much. This one, I'm not sure. Oh, this may be the supporter banner. I like the knot work, and it's quite fancy. And then we're back to normal banners. I think I kind of want to go with one of these two. Um, one problem that the Hedge Knight will have is that because he is a main character, and it's very important to keep him alive, you don't want him to have any bad traits. And you want him to have good stars in things that he's going to use. Because if he ends up with like three stars in ranged attack, one in initiative, and one in like, I don't know, you know something else that isn't too great for a frontline fighter, that's going to be a bit of a problem. Because he's going to have the best equipment and be the highest level and be pretty much taking hits to the face while the rest of your company gets trained up in the early campaign. Uh, this, I like it, but it could get very dark. I'm going to go with this one. So, I have been assured that this map seed is a nice one for a hedge knight. It's Dariushev. So, Darius H-E-V. 
uh, as in Darius Vermeid from the Old Testament. I'm going to set Late Game Crisis to random. War, the mercenary companies you come up against initially, and the professional soldiers, are a little bit... it's a bit of a big step up in difficulty. And you can end up getting attacked wherever you go. Greenskin Invasion, Orcs and Goblins working together... oh my god, it's rough. The Undead Scourge, I actually quite like it. I mean, people who die keep getting back up to fight. But I'm going to leave it on random. Because, so yeah, the problem with the Hedge Knight needing good good perks and good stars and stuff is that if he doesn't get them, the player is drastically tempted to constantly restart to, you know, to get better map seeds. And generally, that takes away from the fun of the whole uh, roguelike experience. Now, I tend to go veteran combat difficulty, beginner economic difficulty, because I found that the uh, during various balance patches in the game and updates, the distances between settlements have grown larger, but the pay for jobs has not. Therefore, you end up spending more money on food and supplies traveling from place to place, and it is very hard to justify going up to veteran com economic difficulty yet. Plus, this is just a quick playthrough. Starting funds, I tend to set high, but this is supposed to be a... I'll set that to medium, okay? Uh, I'm not going to click Iron Man mode because in case the game crashes or I lose my save file or some, something goes buggy, that'd be bad. So let's just dive right in with our knight and have some fun. I have tried out this map seed a little bit earlier while I was waiting to be able to record because I wasn't able to record earlier. Ah, here we are. The Lone Wolf. And hark at that music just coming in there. Beautiful, noble, magnificent, powerful. Just like our potato-faced, smashed-up-faced knight is going to be. You walk the stands of a jousting arena. Moldy fruits and vegetables litter the floor. Dried blood freckles the seats, and silence fills the air. When you sit, the wood of the place seems to groan in unison as though discomforted by the haunt of a rare visitor. In your hands is a note. Look here for hardy men, knowledge of the sword preferred, but all welcome. It's an old note, its purpose long since served, but what draws your eye is the price offered to the task. More crowns than you could muster in five tournaments. If this is the coin being earned, then to hell with the jousts and the sparring. But you're not one to suit up for some other captain's orders. With all that you've earned over the years, you imagine you could start your own mercenary band just fine. And that is what I'll do. Let's have a look at our knight. He is Tostig the Lone Wolf. I may rename him. He has Sellsword's armor, a longsword, and a bassinet with mail. And that's what he looks like without it. We have three stars in melee skill, two stars in melee defense, and three in fatigue. That's really good. But we're going so things we need. Things that can take him down quickly. He could get stunned. Oh, no perks. This is interesting. When I tried... Uh, not perks, no um, talents. When I tried this map seed before, I got very different talents. I wonder what happened. Well... Hmm... That is actually very odd. I'll try that again, just quickly. And see how that looks. Should be the same. Oh, I think last time I had it all set to beginner. Let's see if that modifies things. Well, let's let's try anyway and see just quickly. And if I get no no talents again, hey, I'll just play with no talents. You know. Last time I got iron lungs and um, fearless. 
Okay, so they aren't tied to the map seed anymore. That is really interesting. Let's get on with this leveling. All right, I'll take the three here. I'll take the five there. And I'll take the three here because I want to live. Now, I'm thinking of going Mason Shield this night, or Sword and Shield, rather than Two-Handed Weapon. However, we do have some leveling to do. I'll take Colossus. That makes him his first level up. Four is good. Three is good. Three is good. I will be wanting to raise Resolve and Fatigue. So yeah, things that can take him down. Being stunned or being charmed by a witch. Those would be bad things. So we're going to go Steel Brow. And then... Oh, this is nice. Oh, we could just get so much fatigue. However, what we're going to do at this point is take the brawny perk. And I've just been sent a message by someone. Hmm. So, Ludolf. We shall rename you Sir Ashan Wayne Carfin. Nope, won't go in. Except it will. There we go. Sir Ashan Wayne Carfin. Knight of the Realm. Pillar of Virtue. The lone stressed man of the apocalypse. This is a castle. We are unlikely to find work here, but men must be hired. Strong and true. Matis for Bull. Well, he has a pitchfork already. Money is going to be tight. It would be nice to hire skilled individuals. However, men of this meagre calibre will have to do because they also need to be equipped oh no spears well clubs it is then oh he is swift and a weasel and hesitant dastard oh dear well then, onwards. Let us find some quest. Now, Sir Ashanwen Carfin is a noble knight. And he will not turn down a mission if he believes it is within his capabilities. He is honourable, so he will not betray his employer. And he will endeavour to look after his men. Oh, this is interesting. So... I've been playing with the Legends mod, which means that I am so used to having... The this is not the same Daria Shev map that I played on before. That's really interesting. Okay. Well, so. Um, starting with all the towns revealed just feels really weird. I prefer Legends mod where the towns are concealed at the beginning. Now, there are a lot of fortifications here. Uh, Gunheim is a village. Hooray. Torverholm, a keep. So, when pl so yeah, with, uh, with Legends, I played a lot with the... My favourite uh, Legends Origin to play was the... The Sea of the Wise One, right? where she's all about battlefield control and supporting her company. I also enjoyed playing with the Crusader, but the Crusader's sword was just far too powerful. The Crusader's sword in Legends was the two-handed sword, but with the one-handed attack as an option. So you could do the two-handed split, the one-handed attack twice with light quick cuts, and then you could have the, the split uh, attack two people in a row and the big swing. It just felt rough. Uh, ooh, terrified villagers. Okay, good, it's not nightmares. 
Ike of Gunheim standing by his window, peering out while nursing a mug of mead. He doesn't seem to have focused on anything in particular, and even talks as if he couldn't care less about the conversation. Grave robbers have plundered the cemetery. Again. I'm not really asking much of you, Selsword, other than to go there and put an end to this foolish business. Go to that cemetery and kill every grave robber you see. Got it? Good. Well, what's for pay? He jingles with a bag of coins. This'll be yours if you help me out on this. You'll be paid a hundred crowns in advance and another 420 when the job is done. For a one skull contract, that is suspiciously high. However, we will accept the offer, and as an honourable knight, we shall not quibble on the price. We don't want to get a bad reputation. Away we go then, with our company, wandering through the snow towards the distant mountain range. And after this mission, I'll probably end the episode because I don't have a clock here in front of me to keep track of time. As the company takes a break, you decide to address the men. Brothers, I want everyone to know that good companions are not just cutthroats and errand boys, but skilled fighters of the First Order. Word of our deeds must spread, so that merchants and noblemen are begging us to take their contracts. What will you tell the men and the company will set out to do? Uh, we do need to get the company's strength up quickly. However, we also need them to be equipped and fed and cared for. So, we need allies. Forging a bond of friendship and trust with one of the towns will get the company better prices, more volunteers, and more steady work. So that will be two missions in a normal-sized town, three missions in a large town. Uh, again, a reminder, I'm playing on the medium combat difficulty, so... I'm going to have to be a little bit careful about how I handle things here. You eye a tombstone with a mound of soil underneath at its base. Blots of mud lead away like a crumb trail. There are no shovels, no men. As you follow the lead, you come across a band of undead moaning and groaning, now staring at you with insatiable hunger. Moaning and groaning means it's probably Wiedergangers, or Gangangers, the Deadwalkers. And probably not the Nachzerers, which would be a problem for us this early. Let's see, to arms! You can't make out who you'll be facing. Attack at your own peril, and prepare to retreat if need be. Absolutely. Oh, this could be a very short campaign, couldn't it? Right, Alfred, get up on there, would you? Yep, yeah, I see Walking Dead. And it's not a shitty TV series. Friedrich, up there if you would. Now, Sir Ashan Wayne Coffin, here or here? You know, if we go to he here for now, let them come and taste my blade. Oh, the shambling dead shall rise the slopes of the incline, up the hill, and when they come, we shall be ready for them. Alfred, mount the rise, good man. Friedrich, if you could get up there, that'd be superb. And now many will flock around our beloved knight. And he will cut them down with his mighty blade. In theory. That was terrible. Oh well. <laughs> this one's going to try come up here. We need to try and stop him. That wavering morale is a problem. We'll need to deal with that in the near future. However, Alfred, bash him with your club. Bash him again. Friedrich, give him a wallop for me, would you? Nice. Ooh, okay, okay, this is going to get interesting in a moment. As I predicted, the dead mounted the rise. Now, good sir knight, if you'd be so bold, hack him down. 
This is good. I mean, he got back up again. You're never going to keep him down. Well, maybe. I mean, he's not Chumba Wumba, is he? Nice, 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 Friedrich. If you could get in a few good whacks here, that'd be great. Oh, no. No, 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 this is a problem. At least our nice recovering morale. Oh, my God. Off of his head. That was brutal. Oh, bad slice. Okay, now we got a problem. That old cleaver is a major issue for us. I don't know where that zombie was trying to go, but it's gone now. The cleaver of doom. All right, just kill this one, please. Or at least seriously maim it, that's fine. I fear we'll be back down to our single knight again very soon. Yes. That is most unfortunate. All right, all right. Let's just try to take this one down. And we need to watch our fatigue. Also, we need to not get stunned by maces. Uh, let's try. Gotcha! Now, occasionally the dead get back up again, and that is obviously a problem. However, the more we can fell, the less attacks will be... Oh my goodness, here we come. Oh man, he's going for beheading. Okay, we just need to try and hack him to pieces, round by round. Now, from what I understand, the... Uh, the uh, head off attack, the beheading attack from the cleaver, gains extra damage based on the amount of damage you've already taken. Nice! I mean, not so nice, he got back up again. But we try. Oh. This is all very tense. Our brave knight is fighting away here. Look at his morale! He's got the big blue flag, he's feeling confident. He's like, I've killed you once, I'll kill you again! Now stay down! He is going to need to pay so much money in repairs after this. The enemy retreats. The other thing I didn't mention is, as an honourable knight, we shall always accept the enemy surrender. Even if it would be highly advantageous not to from time to time. Well, we got our two bludgeons back. We got a padded kettle hat and a full leather cap. I mean, it doesn't really compare to losing two two brothers in arms so early on. But let us return. A lonely knight, victorious, will hobble out of the snow into the town and claim his prize. And perhaps one or more of the townsfolk will be encouraged to join his worthy cause. But bloody better, because we're going to have serious problems if they don't. Ike of Gunheim clasps his hands, then drops them into his lap. I've heard of these things, these shuffling monstrosities. This is not good to hear that they come to Gunheim. Though, I suppose, if they're to be anywhere, the cemetery would be best. Better than the town square, anyway. <laughs> he laughs nervously to himself. Well, Valoram is standing out my door with your pay. Thank you, Selsword. You gain 420 crowns, and Gunheim no longer has terrified villagers. Well, that's grand. Could one or two... Ragnar! You'll take a coin, won't you? No... Nope. You're a beggar? You, a vagabond? No, so homeless, but not a beggar. <laughs> okay. Never a strong learner in school, Ragnar dropped out to wander the earth, but when he came to a literal fork in the road, the man realised he hadn't eaten in some time. His stomach demanded a change in scenery and diet. He's not particularly good at anything, but Ragnar has seen and done a lot, and that's worth something at least. 
and Sigbold, a day taler. The taler was a German medieval large silver coin. Uh, it was worth a bit, was it worth about two pounds or a bit larger than a pound? I'm not sure. Ironically, the American word dollar derives from the taler. It is the original dollar, as it were. So he's literally getting a taler a day for his work, right? He's he's living from hand to mouth. Doing this and that, Sigbold is known as a day taler, someone who asks whenever an extra hand is needed. Sigbold wanted to do something he had not done before, so a travelling mercenary company seemed a good opportunity to stay with for a while. He's basically an odd jobsman. Can we get spears? You have no spears. We need spears this early on. Alright, we'll have you and you. You get a club. You get a club. Right. Loyal. That's really good. Brute and irrational. Okay, look, we're going to give you the full leather cap because uh, fatigue, morale, initiative. Okay, and we have melee skill, melee defense, hit points. That's okay for frontline, so we're going to give you the better helmet for now. We're going to see if there, there are no shields here. Oh, what's this? Paint remover, at last. The paint is nice, but having the ability to remove paint from items we have scavenged from the corpse of our foes is nice. We have some food, but not enough. So we will take roots and berries and some ground grains. We also want some tools to perform repairs on our equipment. This is a two skull contract. It's probably beyond our means. There are no rumours regarding nearby work. So let's head out back into the world looking for somewhere there might be employment. Torvahom is a castle, as is Vardaberg. Gunholm is a castle. Bloody hell, they're all castles. Jadeberg, not a castle. So basically, if we want any work at all, we want to be heading back down south to somewhere like Jungholz. That's a long way to go for work. Well, okay. Let's head on out then. The nice thing about walking such a long way to find work is that we'll get to repair equipment and recover from our injuries. However, I feel that that is something we should be doing in the very next episode. I hope you've all enjoyed this one, and I'll look forward to seeing you all in the next one. I'll say bye-bye for now, and cheerio!